Hey, hey, good to see all you guys. Wow, what's up everybody? Yeah. Alright, welcome back to Double B Philosophy. Today we have two very special guests joining us, Bennett. Yes we do. Our good friends Plato and Emmanuel Kent are here to explain rational philosophy. Yeah. Come on now. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll just cut between that, I guess. Okay. I feel like I should have a total of all you want. Yeah, thank you guys for like yourselves. Well, I am Emmanuel Kent. Woo, yeah, Emmanuel Kent! Woo! So you got a few fans going, probably read a few of my philosophical articles. I'm from Prussia, and I was born in the early 1700s. Well, Prussia is a no longer existing country that used to be next to Russia, and as with most countries near Russia... Russia? What is this Russia you speak of? Plato's a little behind on the times. Yeah, Plato! Plato, tell us about yourself. Well, the audience is really intrigued right now about who Yeah, I'm intrigued. Oh. And this audience cares about me for what I I don't know. I mean, you are the famous philosopher here, and we'd love to hear about your story. I can certainly tell you that I am not famous. However, my students are quite famous. Look at this guy, for instance. He's definitely not one of my students. But most, a lot of my research was actually based off of previously found theories by Plato. Whoa! And the slogan I tried to live by, possibly, the slogan I choose tried to live by was Sapir Adi, which is dare to be wise, which I feel was a statement for our time, which was the Great Enlightenment, or also known as the Re Renaissance. People choosing to become more aware of their, of the world, of sciences, and of themselves, which was a breakthrough in the way of how we understood the universe and the human nature in itself. Well, rational thinking can be thought of as the first basis of thinking, because it is a common way for people to identify that. It is what we base most of our ideas on. Most of Everyone's ideas are based on something they themselves haven't truly experienced, and yet feel that way about something. I mean, if you were to truly only believe what you have encountered in real life, your, lane, your range to trust things would be so limited to an incapacitating amount. So, we essentially came before skepticism and... and Empiricism. Empiricism? Yes. You see, I actually don't know that much about empiricism, for I'm irrational. I only know evidence. And in my time, all we had was evidence. We, we weren't thinking about ourselves, and we weren't taking the things that I certainly can see. Are we recording right now? <coughs> I'm right, such a bad actor. Um, Alright, so now we're going to think of other people with other beliefs that do not share rationalists. Their lives should be burned and scorched! I'm just kidding, of course, because I'm a rationalist. And so you, do you respect them? I feel as the realm of skepticism is not the way to go because based on skepticism, you can never truly know something. And if you never know anything, then what's the point of living? The ability to understand something, it doesn't have to be something complex. It can be something as simple. I mean, their only belief is that they themselves exist. They don't even know what themselves are. They believe. But, if I am able to say, I am me, you are not me, and he is not me, I can base this based on the fact that I have my own thoughts, and these thoughts have been experienced by someone, by me. They are not your thoughts, which have been experienced only by you. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the world I lived on, there was many events unfolding in the time period. The entire world was starting to connect to each other in ways that haven't, hadn't been experienced then. We, you could no longer base your opinions on, on only what you yourself have experienced through your five senses, which is the basis of imperialist thinking. So, by that logic, you would, you would not know anything outside your own experiences. 
you wouldn't know, you couldn't truly know who the President of the United States was because you've never met Obama or whoever your President is in this time period, which I don't technically So you guys exist. think experiences are a big part of your beliefs? Experiences do help rationalists to formulate ideas, but they are not the only thing we feel that can justify a fact which allows us to view a larger range of things, to discuss a more full version of the world, and have truly solid beliefs. So do you respect a certain belief more of skepticism or empiricism? I can see the logic in the, the empiricism think because they, they have these experiences from which they formulate ideas. So, through this, they have a very, very narrow, but very defined sense of what is real. While skeptics don't trust anything. That's actually all the time we got. Please join us next week with Barb and I, and we're going to bring in Socrates and Aristotle on the show. Yeah, you guys have all been a great audience. You have one last standing ovation for our famous philosophers. Thank you. And you will play it. And play it up. Yeah. Thank you guys. It was awesome. Nice job, Barb. It was awesome to see you guys today. Good luck. Thanks for your time, Bennett. Good show, Barb. Thanks, Barb. Thank you. Thank you. And this is our other guest star, Captain Jack Sparrow. Thanks. Thank you. Cut.